Hello everyone. Just let me just fix this. Okay. I understand this is the last session and we are really excited about the evening activity which is planned, but I promise you it won't be bo boring. Uh, I am Manav Preet Kaur. I am a member of Movement Charter Drafting Committee. I started off working with the Wikimedia movement as an educator because when I started off I was working at a university and then I worked with my students to contribute content on two different language projects. And that is how it began. And I actually wanted to speak here uh, to all the other educators in the world to talk about how we can actually be together to actually talk about what are the workflows that we are working on as individual community members, what projects are um, being supported by the affiliate which is existing in the movement, especially focusing on education, what support is being extended by the foundation, and how we can actually come together and bridge those gaps that we have already identified in multiple conversations over the days here. So basically, uh, uh, there are a few slides that I have prepared. They're not extensive, there are many. Uh, it's not moving. OK, I'll use this. You can use this QR code to join uh, the discussion. Just scan it. So if you have joined it, just let me know. I just see two people here. I won't change it. <laughs> So the link is ahaslides.com slash mse2023. Great, we have 10 people who have joined. Ready? Let's give it another minute. Is there any <laughs> Sadly, there are no prizes in this one. <laughs> okay. okay, should we proceed? Okay. Oh! <laughs> It was not a quiz. I don't know why it is saying it's a quiz. Players. A what? Oh my god. Trust me, there are no points, there are no rewards here. Okay, so the first question is, are you aware of the movement strategy process? Come on, come on. Nita, I must have... I should have run this through Netha because she's an expert on Aha Slides, which I'm not. Okay, great. Oh, great. So we have nine people who are aware of the movement strategy process, while two are not. So for them, uh, the basically, the movement strategy process started in 2017 when we actually gathered together to think about what is our future goal for 2020. In 2018, there were working groups who were formulated, and those working groups came up with 40 initiatives and 10 recommendations in 2020. And then Movement Charter Drafting Committee was formulated in 2021, November. And that is how we have been progressing forward. There is a lot to talk about in the future slides. Yeah, so there's a range of options that you'll see on your mobile phones about how engaged are you with the Movement Charter Drafting Committee work. Okay, there's a good range here. Do we have any Movement Strategy Ambassador or, ad or Advisor in the room? Yay, we have Shani. <laughs> Okay. Okay, so we'll talk more about uh, what these initiatives are in the coming slides. Yeah, are you, again, we know who the movement strategy ambassador is in the room. So we'll skip this one. Yeah, so are you aware of the MCDC Advisors Program? OK. 
Okay. Who's sad about this? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. So, so basically, this is the opportunity for us to actually talk about it. So, as you know, uh, right now there are three drafting groups who are actively working on three different chapters of the charter. One is rules and responsibilities, one is global council, and the other one is decision making. Because this work is extensive, there is no limit on how we can actually start this work and how we can actually keep on expanding this work forward. And there's a lot of expertise which is existing in the movement. So being considerate of the existing expertise and in order to actually bring that expertise into the group to actually help us draft this better to be conscious of what is happening in the movement to be conscious of what research or what experience the community already holds uh, we have created room for all those experienced individuals and entities to come in and guide us while we are drafting those chapters. So this position is currently open, if I'm not wrong, Dari, right? The position is currently open. We have received interest from so many of the affiliates and individuals to help us guide this. So um, please read more about MCDC Advisors Program. And if you have something substantial to contribute in terms of your individual research or your affiliates research or your group's work that is relevant to our work, please do sign up as MCDC Advisors. Yeah, so this question is about how are you engaged with movement charter or strategy work? Are you engaged as an individual, as an affiliate representative, a community member, or as EduWiki representative? Okay, great. <laughs> so with 20% of the participants, can I request uh, like, uh, someone to identify who is EduWiki representative in the movement strategy process, apart from you, of course. Okay, so that means none of us have been talking about the fact that we should actually talk about it, or if as a community we need to come together and participate in the movement strategy or movement charter drafting committee process. Okay. So how is EduWiki a stakeholder? in the movement strategy process. So the important question is, because we are not participating in it, because there are very few people among us who are actually talking about strategy, who are actually talking about charter, who are committing their time to actually take the word back to their communities and bring back that feedback because it is relevant, uh, it is important for us to actually review why we are not talking about it and why it is important for all of us to actually reimagine the whole strategy process as it is relevant for us so um, if we ask ourselves, how is EduWiki a stakeholder in the movement? Oh, there's no idea. So basically, um, as an educator who is working in the movement, let's just skip this question for some time. I'll move back to the previous slide. Uh, OK. So basically, we have editors. We have communities. We have groups. We have uh, partners. We have affiliate. Uh, EduWiki user group, we have all the different movement entities that are stakeholders in the process. So if you'll ask me, there is no standard definition for a stakeholder as of now, but anyone who's going to be impacted by the movement charter is a stakeholder. Anyone who has something to contribute to and has a voice in the process is a stakeholder. While all these different entities as individual entities are stakeholders, you have a collaborative unit of all of these different stakeholders. You are individual editors, you are affiliate representatives, you are community representatives, you are coming from the partner institutions. So you are, this is a space where we have stakeholders from different entities and you can actually come together and talk about strategy and be of more um, importance in terms of giving that feedback to the community. Committee. Okay. Yeah, we have one answer here. We know who's, who knows this answer. Shani spoke about this yesterday. She mentioned that we have somehow nine um, recommendations relevant to EduWiki, but this question is about initiatives. So how many initiatives do you feel are connected to EduWiki? Okay. 
Are we waiting for others to answer? Or should we consider this close? Oh. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I'm going there. Yeah. Yeah, let's give this opportunity to everyone. Okay. Do we need more time? Okay. Okay, so we have now responses from more members, but yeah, let's just move on. So the correct answer for somebody who has discussed this with some of you here, not everyone is 27 plus because they have, we have been able to identify the workflows that are in relevance with 27 plus uh, initiatives. But if yes, if there is someone who sees there are 35 plus recommendations that are suited to us or that are relevant to the education community, it's great. That means if we believe there is so much association with all the in initiatives, we should be more than ever determined and focused on working in this direction and also being aware of what is happening uh, in terms of the movement charter updates or movement strategy process in general. Yeah. So why is it important to join the discussion? So basically because we are working on this, we are defining the rules and responsibilities in the movement. Uh, we are not saying that we are going to redefine the structure of the movement. We might be retaining some of those structures, but we need your guidance. We need your help in able to understand what is working well, what is not working well, what are your visions for the future, so that we have that understanding of what is required and we are able to deliver that as well in terms of a draft. Um, so for that, we are doing the rules and responsibilities exercise as this is something we have mentioned time and again. Even in Wikimedia Summit 2022, we mentioned that because of the wide nature of the scope of this chapter, we came up with, uh, we, did, we didn't come up with the draft for rules and responsibilities. We came up with an intuition statement that what will be our guiding um, document while we are working on defining the rules and responsibilities because we have so many stakeholders here in the room we'd like to do one exercise with you um, so the exercise is that you will have to split in like three groups one would act as a community the other one affiliate and hub and you will have to define what work you can do as a community and what is something that is just out of the scope for you, if you are limited in that space as a volunteer community to, to, to work on. And similarly for affiliates, and if ever there is a hub, what kind of workflows you'll be able to work on and what you just can't do as a hub as well. So the exercise is clear, right? Uh, you have to split in three groups and each group will focus on what we can do and what you cannot do. Yeah, so you can choose for yourself who wants to be community, who wants to be affiliate and who wants to be hub. Okay, let's just move around and decide our own groups. Yay! And you are? And you are? Community hub or affiliate? Hub. Hub, okay. So everyone from hubs can move to that side of the room? Oh. So everyone who associates with hub can move to that corner of the room. Uh, I'd request everyone to come in this side for community and on this side for affiliates. I'll hand over you the pages and sticky notes. Nobody has signed up for community. <laughs> There's no community member. You are coming in as affiliate? Yeah, affiliate then. User groups, chapters, thematic organizations, all on this side. User group is affiliate, yes. No association with any affiliation is community. Yeah, so discuss if you are a hub, what kind of workflows can you support and what is something that is out of your scope. Yeah, just imagine yourself to be a hub, an education hub, 
and write what are the workflows that hubs can support and what are the workflows that hubs cannot support. And then uh, when we'll discuss this within uh, with other teams, we'll come up with the reasons on why this should not be supported by hubs and why this is more relevant for other things, like why this is more relevant workflow for affiliates or community in general. And for affiliates, you'll, uh, for community, you'll have to mention what should be a community responsibility and what should be what should not be a community responsibility? Yeah. See, I'll I'll give you the pages. I'm just not able to drag all of this. Okay, there are She's saying there are more there. There. Okay. We'll use 15 minutes for this discussion and exercise, and after 15 minutes, we'll use time to reflect on what we have come up with the, uh, in different groups.
Yeah, because we we are here as edu uh, for education discuss discussions, but we are also part of different communities, so we can be specific in our discussions, but generic in our responses. For example, if you're saying we should have uh, we should be the finance supporters for education, at least this might also be relevant from for some other hubs. So yeah, it should it, it is advisable if it is uh, generic, but yeah, specific is also helpful. Yeah, either. Eleven minutes.
The six minutes left for discussions. Six minutes left. Three minutes left, please uh, wind up your discussions. In two minutes, we'll start hearing from the community team. Two minutes.
Okay, last one minute. Okay, we are ready to hear from community team. Okay, two more minutes. <laughs> the hubs are not ending. Hubs need more time. <laughs> because they're not existing as of now and it's open to imagination, right? Someone has taken up the responsibility that you were not ready to take. <laughs> so the community has raised a problem. The hubs have found a solution for that. Are we ready? Hubs group, are we ready? <laughs> we need to discuss it. We, we need to discuss with others in the room if they agree with our vision of our respective groups also. So can we quickly? Ask community to share what they can do and what they cannot do. Here's the mic. Hi, everyone. Please, let's hear. We are the community group. My name is Nadal Hussain. Uh, I am from the Malayalam Indian Mic is not on. All right. No, probably it's me. All right, my name is Neta Hussain. I'm from the Malayalam Wikimedia community. Um, and usually in such discussions, uh, the community group would be the largest fraction because even in the movement, the community is the largest fraction, but here we were only three and we were limited by participation. Anyway, um, so we, decide, we designed a poster showing what we could and what we couldn't. Uh, as, as the community, we could do a lot of outreach. We could gain visibility for any of the projects that anybody is doing. We are also capable to do advocacy. But on the other hand, we can't provide funding. The funding should come from elsewhere, of course. Uh, we, as a community, are capable for doing training in schools, universities. We are capable to do training programs. Uh, but on the other hand, we need tools and technology uh, to develop, I mean, uh, there are off, there are one-off users who, you know, create tools and maintain them. But in general, we would need affiliates or hubs or the foundation to develop and maintain tools for us uh, to give visibility to our projects to measure our successes. Um, and as community, we are ready to collect feedback from the students, from every stakeholders. But on the other hand, we cannot do structured research. So the data would be with us, we would be ready to collect them. But this has to, it has to come from somewhere else to do the research based on that and to formulate what were the successes and failures. Uh, occasionally, we, we are able to do, create individual partnerships. We are ready to go to local schools, universities, and talk with the um, people who are responsible there and initiate partnerships. But to sustain partnerships, to build institutional partnerships, to formalize those partnerships, we need help from elsewhere. Um, and we are also ready to 
give give you new ideas give um, formulation of new policies we could talk to you about our problems what problems we are facing now what problems are students facing we could tell you our experiences from the grassroots level but on the other hand to create policies based on that we need help from elsewhere um, this is what we discussed that's it thank you <laughs> Okay, so anyone has any questions here or we do agree with how they have identified their, uh, what they're capable of what, and where they need support. If there are any kind of co concerns or questions with how they have identified their capacities, we can raise those questions now. Okay. Okay. So th that means we have no objections to how they have defined their roles. Thank you so much, Nita. Who's coming from affiliates? So you said the cannot, cannot create these training resources, develop resources. We are ready to provide inputs to develop resources. But to maintain them, you know, there, sh there should be a lot of structured discussion that needs to happen. So somebody should take the leadership in developing and maintaining those resources because volunteers would come and they would stay for some time and they could get burned out or they can't take sustained responsibility on a particular resource. So um, creation of some resource would be fine, but uh, to sustain them, to update them, to maintain them in the long run, we would need help from elsewhere. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me keep it. Please come on. So now the affiliates are coming in sharing about what they cannot, what they can or cannot do. I'll help you. So for affiliation, uh, we define like our law rule as um, first of the first of all to expand scope of the audience, like to bring in new more newbies, newcomers, and also to determine every party responsibilities. Like what's the responsibility of the affiliation? What's the responsibility of the foundation? What's the responsibility of the uh, uh, to the community? So we know everybody responsibility and not interfere with each other. And know what's the contact person. Uh, marketing uh, more, more, more like um, uh, a tendency toward marketing and social or digital advocacy. Also, uh, uh, we like see that there should be a liaison or like uh, contact person with the Wikimedia Foundation, and also uh, more, uh, more uh, commitment toward uh, recruiting uh, new, uh, new funding. Uh, and also internal audit in the same uh, f in, in the same affiliation, so that like uh, there is a better uh, allocation of re resources or sustainability of the resources. Uh, partnership with the public organizations and like universities, like uh, ministries, in order to achieve our goals. And also uh, like um, uh, meeting conferences, uh, getting to know each other, uh, sharing experiences. What we cannot do, uh, we cannot host the servers. Apparently, and we cannot like uh, do the branding uh, of our movement because, like, uh, there was I don't know if you heard about the rebranding project. Uh, we still like have sometimes problem when, when Wikimedia, for example, Levant. When we defined Wikimedia, Levant, we said this is the organization that belong and promote Wikipedia. So at the end of the day, we refer to Wikipedia. So there was like an idea to say Wikipedia Levant, just like that, like this. So we we cannot like do the brand as on the on the whole like movement yeah any questions not a question rather a comment that it sounded as if everything you're talking about is local So that's actually a question. Is it local? Like when you thought about it? About, your, about this, uh, this, uh, Everything that you do, it sounds like when you say collaborate with universities, you mean in your local no, context? No, 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 no. In, on the broader aspect, like, in, like as affiliation, you should have contact with public you know, bodies in general. For example, just example, universities, but in ministries. Your, but in your country, in your, in yeah. your place, is yeah. that correct? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, locally. Yeah. Now I, I now I understand you. Yeah, regional. Yes, regional, uh, regional. Because if it's regional, it's 
quite a different thing, and yeah. I would argue that not necessarily. Oh, uh, I see. What, what's the point? What's your point of view, because Jenny? We are well. We are from the hub, so. Ah, uh, yeah, I see. I can see. <laughs> so I want a clear a distinction to draw yeah. a clear distinction between what a hub is and what a local affiliate uh, is doing. Yeah, I see. Okay? I see. I see your point. Yes. Well, they will become hubs. Everybody will become hub at the end of the day. Yeah. Okay, we'll hear more from hubs on. Will ever thematic organizations convert to hubs or not? Sorgs or hubs would be. So I'll invite somebody the from the hubs group to now share their vision about hubs, please. I come the holder. <laughs> okay. okay, we discuss uh, in the group uh, what we can do uh, as a hub and what we can't do as a hub. Uh, and we agreed that uh, if we create the hub, uh, we can do like creating the ideas, initiatives and the repository for the uh, regional uh, groups and hubs. Uh, we can provide uh, support with resources for the interesting uh, parties, uh, help them uh, in maintaining that ideas and initiatives and support them uh, to hold these things. Uh, also, we can connect uh, as a hub uh, the different parties. Uh, for example, if some uh, affiliates doing some work on specific uh, area and uh, someone in the moment wants to do in the future so we can connect these uh, parties and they can share their learnings and uh, their ideas. Um, uh, and yes, uh, sharing resources. Uh, the hub can uh, help uh, the moment to share their resources, what we have uh, with the different affiliates and different groups uh, in the hub. Uh, we can, as a hub, uh, run the fundraising, uh, but we agreed that we need to collaborate with WMF on this uh, because, you know, we need to do that because, the, well, WMF holds everything. <laughs> uh, uh, we can run the mentorship program. Also, we can uh, help with uh, technical tools and technically develop uh, the thing for the education and not only for the educational field. Uh, we can provide expertise uh, in the specific areas. Uh, what's uh, hub to uh, can do? We uh, we run global outreach and partnerships programs. For example, uh, in the educational field, we can collaborate for uh, in with the UNESCO or even the UN, uh, and uh, like connect uh, local with global. Uh, we done research. Uh, the research are taking many times, so and it's main field of the work of the hub. Uh, and we can uh, share our ideas and collaborate within the moment, like not with the global, but uh, within the region, within the moment of the community, and with the other hubs too. Uh, and we discuss what we don't do in as a hub. It's uh, there is no standards, like. Uh, as a hub, you can uh, develop your ideas from local needs, but uh, you can uh, look the what done by our hubs and uh, localize it for your local needs. Like if, the, if uh, our hubs like done something uh, what you very like, you can localize it for you as a hub or as a affiliate. Uh, and hub don't run any programs; it's up for the local. Uh, and we, we don't need to dictate anything for the affiliates. Like, if affiliates uh, want to do something, okay, that's their work, but we don't dictate. We just share with them ideas, resources, give them advice, but not dictate that need, they need to, what they need to do. Uh, yeah, that's it. Any questions? Thank you. <laughs> And thanks my group for, for this all.
Okay, so uh, clearly there are no overlaps in how we see our own respective groups working. So that means we can cohesively uh, like coexist with each other and work on our own respective responsibilities in an ideal scenario. But there is one uh, question here because fundraising is something that was being discussed by affiliates as well. And uh, you also discuss fundraising. So this is an opportunity for us to actually see whether or not affiliates should engage in fundraising, what are the pros and cons of doing that, or is this something which, is, which should primarily be the responsibility of hubs in association with foundation, as you said. So do you have a response to that? No, 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 no. Uh, to the hubs group. I mean, I think both, right? I think there are funding opportunities that are local to a specific context that the foundation should be collaborating with local leaders in those countries to pursue fund fundraising through those. But there's also global education funding opportunities that the foundation should be working with the hub to ensure money's coming in for education programs around the world. So I don't think this is an either or, I think it's a both. Yeah. And the key here is the foundation should be supporting uh, money generation that is coming directly to people running programs. Yeah. And I just want to add that there is no overlap because uh, Hub can take care of the global uh, like fundraising if we can, for example, as a Hub, we can apply for EU funding, but local affiliates can apply for, the, for example, grants for the, from the mine industry. So it's not a problem. Um, I have a question because what I heard from you, Shani, it's apparently user group are now limited to local activities. So can you exactly, the, well, when we presented the affiliates, it was a partnership with university had to be local. So, okay, what happened with all the groups that have an activity beyond a specific local area? And there are many of them, many. Should I, uh, are they going to be all moved as hub? whether they want it or not? What happened? First of all, I don't have all the answers. It's for us to decide what will happen. From my perspective, as of now, when I asked the question of clarification, I was talking specifically about affiliates who are doing local work. I was not referring to thematical affiliates. So anyone doing thematic work will need to see what, what they want to do. They can remain a user group or it we actually have also THORGs, like Wikimedia Medicine, a thematic organizations, right? Like when they grow up, they can't become a chapter, but they became a thematic organization for now. That's historically how we did things. Will, whether, let's say, Wikimedia Medicine decides to, become, to, to remain a thematic organization or evolve into a hub is up to them. I think what we see happens is that there is a need coming from the ground right now to create hubs and we see at least two types one that are regional right like the cee one and ones like the education maybe future hub that are thematic so these are two different types of even hubs and just like we have different types of, of user groups we have local user groups and thematic user groups I think the idea would never be to force anyone to do something that they're not ready to do. I think if, we, if hubs are going to exist, there needs to be a good case of why that makes sense. Uh, for the user group, for education now to evolve to a hub makes more sense than anything else that exists at the moment. So it, it comes down to the people who are actually doing it to see what structure serves the goals that they want to reach and what structure within the movement can help them fulfill that mission best. Yeah. So to me, we are, we're never forcing anyone to do. Thank you so much, Shani. I think this was really helpful for us as well because we realized how you mentioned local. There was one question, but we don't have time to discuss that. But definitely tomorrow we have time to discuss this. Who will manage learning and evaluation? I saw that you are extending support. I saw that you are generating ideas. That means Hubs is potentially the organization who is going to work on learning and evaluation as well. But this is something that was not identified. So, so yeah, so this is something that is possibly an option for us to discuss in the 
tomorrow or today, like later today. Thank you so much for participating in this. This has been really helpful. And yes, it has. it is definitely going to help us define definitions or probably come up with some rules and responsibilities. Thank you. Thank you.